Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm so pumped. I have two of my favorite people in the world on today's episode, Bryce and Christy, who are on permanent vacation. They both (laughs) retired in their early 30s and now travel uh, full time. I am so pumped to talk to you all. They also have an amazing new book that is out today, Quit Like a Millionaire. No gimmicks, luck, or trust run required. Stop working, start living. This book (laughs) is seriously legit. You should go check it out. Check out the link in the show notes. We're going to be talking about the book, how to travel forever. I'm so pumped to talk to you guys. Welcome to the show. So great to see you, Grant. So tell us just the two-minute version of who you are and what you're known for before we get into it. For sure. Okay, so I'm Christy. This is my husband, Bryce. Hello. Um, So we used to live in one of the most expensive cities in Canada, Toronto. Um, And normally we were, originally we were trying to go along this normal path, which is, you know, buy a house, um, you know, get into debt, get a massive mortgage, and work like crazy until you're 65 and retire. And so it wasn't until I realized the craziness of the housing market and how much work I was doing um, and how much stress my coworkers were going through at work that one day I saw one of my coworkers collapse and almost die at his desk from overwork. And then at that point I realized, you know what? This this dream that we've been chasing, like this dream that our parents have been telling us to do, you know, get a job, work until you're 65. This doesn't make any sense. It's it's really turned into a nightmare. I can't do this anymore. So then I decided, you know what, what else can we do? Like, is there something else we can do besides just work until we die? And then so we looked into um, investing and what what other methods there are to get there. And then we actually realized that if we actually invest the money that we saved, um, we could actually retire at the age of 31 within the next couple of years. And then what if we just do that and travel? And then so that's what we actually did. We retired at the ages of 31 and 32 and we started traveling the world. And we've been doing that ever since. So we've been traveling um, and on permanent vacation for the last four years. What a life. I got to ask, it really, is it as good as it sounds? Yeah. It, I can't. I wake up every morning and I, I can't even believe this is my life. Uh, this year, okay. This year, where have we been? Just, just okay, in the last so like, 12 months. Just in the last 12 months, we've been in Portugal. We've been in Spain. Uh, we're headed to um, Oslo, Norway. We've been in Iceland, Thailand. Um, all over the place. Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. All it's over just the place. this is our like, like we started this entire thing as like we, after we retired we decided to go for like a one year trip around the world victory lap kind of thing, and then after we came back we added up all the uh, money that we spent doing that and then we realized oh hey wait a minute we actually only spent about as much during that one year as we were planning on travel on, on as we were planning on spending just retiring in one place back in Toronto. And then we were like, hey, doesn't that mean that we can just do this forever? And then we're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then we bought a ticket to back to Japan, and then we've just been going ever since. Because as it turns out, traveling is not as expensive as you think it is. Yeah. So originally when we were traveling on vacation for work, uh, we would easily blow like maybe $5,000 for a two-week vacation. And we thought that that's how much things are supposed to cost. But what people don't realize is that when you're actually working and you're being sold these vacation packages, it really is just kind of like this, you know, other people are sending you to these places, touristy places that everybody else is going. It's overpriced. It's not really good quality. You're going to crappy restaurants. And then when you actually travel like a local and you actually find out the local restaurants, it's so much better and at at a fraction of the price. Um, So one of the things that we did, we learned was how to travel hack, um, how to get you know, plane tickets for basically just the taxes, really cheap. Um, we learned how to um, stay in Airbnbs so that we can alternate between eating out and cooking, and then we have laundry. And then we also, you know, learned how to like just basically finding out all the good deals from the locals and what are the some of the things that people do when they actually live in that country rather than just buy an expensive package. And then that was less expensive than staying at home. It just completely blew our mind. Like even when we went to expensive places like UK or um, going to Switzerland, you just basically balance that with less expensive places like Poland and Thailand, where you can like Thailand, you can live like a king and get a massage every day for twenty thousand dollars a year U.S. easily. And then even Poland was like Poland was the That's same. For the both of us. Yeah, for the same price as Malaysia, which has like European standards. 
And I didn't even discover any of this while we were at, you know, staying in one place and working and paying a lot of money. So it really just completely changed our lives. Yeah, you can actually, yeah, you can actually save money by simply choosing where to live, kind of thing, right? So I mean, if you ever like, you know, there, when we are, when people in the FI community, they worry a lot about sequence of return risk, which is what happens if you know you you retire and then the first couple of years the stock market takes a dive. What do you do? And one of the best defenses that you can do against that is simply Fuck. just to choose to live in a, just choose, just choose just to live go in, in somewhere in a, else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have this. Um, we have this saying that goes: "If shit hits the fan, we're moving to Thailand." Yeah. Because like, when you do that, you can drop your cost by like half. And then when you drop your cost by half, you can just live off of the dividends that are, are coming off your portfolio. You don't need to sell anything. You just wait for the stock market to come back up again. So it's like, um, and 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 then if you do it in a certain way, you can actually make money because you can actually live for less than what your portfolio is yielding. So if the if the, the stock market goes down, you can actually move live on a beach uh, uh, live on a beach full year and then just and then you'll actually make money like it's just <laughs> it makes it makes things so fucking easy it's just uh, like if you figure like it just makes you want to shout it from the rooftops and kind of right. like, no, and no, no you no. have and you have i think you've we'll captured this we'll spirit it. incredibly well in your book <laughs> and it just kind of makes you kind of go uh, like because people back home people in like high cost cities uh like you know la you know new york just think that everything is Super expensive, and that's right. just the way that well, we, is. we thought that too. We and thought, we thought that's that too. Right. Things are supposed to cost. And then you like, can't do anything about it. That's how much things are supposed to. And cost. then they, they, they're just like, oh, real estate prices suck. Healthcare sucks. Everything's just so expensive. And then just kind of like, no, it's not. You like you're choosing to do that. And there's a big wide world out there, and all of those things, like, right. like everything changes once you like once you start moving around, and and it yeah. becomes so much easier. You can and get a travel. Like you've traveled yeah. like everywhere, right? So many places. Yeah. Where's the best place in the world to go just to, like, have a really nice four days of doing nothing? That's a fantastic question. I have so many that it's really hard to choose from, but I would say my top three places, Portugal is so good in terms of value and yeah. the experience. Yeah, Port we love Portugal because there's just such a diverse, um, like so many diverse places that you could go to. Like the south of Portugal, if you go to Lagos, which has all these like amazing sandstone cliffs um, right along the ocean. Uh, so it's and it's not very expensive either. We actually stayed there for a month and we only paid um, about like less than a thousand U.S. dollars for rent. Um, there's also um, Porto, which is actually a hidden I've gem. I've been to Porto. Actually, Porto's Porto yeah, is fun. Yeah, Porto is amazing. Awesome. Yeah, everybody goes to Lisbon, but the real value is in Porto. Yeah. Uh, again, rented a place that was like less than a thousand dollars a month, and you get to eat like these like pastel de natas. Yeah, Apparently, they corrected yeah. me. I'm supposed to pronounce it pastel and like it's, not pastel de nata, which is these like egg tarts that are yeah. just like really really crunchy on the outside and then like really creamy on the inside and we ate that for breakfast every day yeah we got addicted to that yeah real it was fast. really good <laughs> yeah um, yeah so tons of like there's those, like fairy tale castles in sintra uh which is only about yeah. 30 minute train ride out from lisbon so that was like just like walking into a, a fairy tale you like got to relive your childhood um and then there's um just like all sorts of beach towns if you want history if you want beaches if you want um like to live in a fairy tale castle like Portugal basically has it all. And the Douro Valley. Yeah, and you can in Wine Valley, and you could basically live there um, relatively cheaply, like thirty to forty thousand dollars a year U.S. for the two of you would not be would not be that challenging. Um, and then we also really like uh, and drinking port every day. Yeah, and drinking it's port like, is pretty yeah, fantastic. It's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so Thailand is also really high up on our list. Okay, so before we went to Thailand, we were thinking like. We weren't really sold on Thailand initially because a lot like we read a lot of the media. It's like, oh, is it dangerous in Thailand? Should we go there? And like, you know, I, I've, I've never been that far from home. Is it going to be really scary? And then when you actually go there and we went there to meet some of our friends, it just it's one of my it's become one of my favorite places, especially um, a place called Chiang Mai, which is northern Thailand. So in Thailand, you can get a you can rent a condo, one bedroom condo, brand new, uh, walking distance to all the attractions with swimming pool for six hundred U.S. dollars a month, everything included, and you can get a massage for ten dollars tip included, like a really good one. All their massages are really good. You don't really have to like really do any research. You just kind of go out and pick one, and they're all equally good. So we're doing it like every two days. It's just like, hey, yeah, let's get a massage. Fantastic. <laughs> we never have to cook. We never cook. There's like barely. We never even touch the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> it's just go out to eat every day, and it's like, like everything's $2. like two dollars, three dollars. <laughs> I I actually lost weight for some reason because I think food is like 
you know, super high in protein. There's we ate an entire table full of seafood, and that was like, you know, twelve dollars US. Um, and you don't gain any weight. Like I'm like, just, why don't we go to Thailand instead of like going on a diet or like reading these diet books? Just go to Thailand, and then your your waist just shrinks and your wallet grows. Yeah. So it's like, no brainer. Yeah, yeah, I really want to spend some time there. Like I've had some friends who have, and I would love to spend like a summer, just some part of a year there. It'd be so nice. Yeah. Let's do it. I recommend Thailand. it. Let's do it, man. Thailand reunion. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. So you live this incredible life. What is the kind of best three recommendations you'd have for someone who's just like, I want to travel forever? Like, what are the three big things that someone who just discovered this needs to know like what had the biggest impact in giving you the the ability to do this i think don't stay in hotels yeah so, definitely stay in airbnb so stay in airbnbs because you you end up getting like um or going down to the city and like uh and then renting something for like a month or something like that because mm-hmm. you end up getting like the local prices of that yeah. rather than the like first prices and if you stay with a with the host that lives there yeah. they can kind yeah. of introduce you to like you know what's the vibe of the city like what where do the locals go go like they don't you know you know we made a lot of friends with airbnb hosts yeah you know the people in thailand don't go around and like go to burger king like don't don't like go around like eat at burger king right Right. i mean like they 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 go to like night markets they go to like the places that you know that are that this uh place is known for they kind of go where the best value is so you end up and you get a kitchen but you don't need in in thailand you don't need it as much but in other places it is more important because you don't have, then you can like cook like a regular person and, and, and eat out like or rather than eating out all the time so airbnb was a really really big part of it uh we actually kind of you know we joke that we basically live in airbnbs now full time um i think another thing that i really want people to know <clears throat> is um okay so one of the things that we struggle with as millennials is that like you know our parents had you know, more secure jobs and like the pension that you could get when you're 65. And then we don't have that. We don't have as much job security. But we what we do have is the ability to travel cheaply and work online. So if you can hack your job so that you can work remotely, um, you can basically like just hack your way to permanent vacation really quickly. Like to give you an example. Um, so we ha- we do like reader cases on our blog and we actually meet people at uh, conferences that we talk to. So there's this other couple. Um, one of them worked, actually they worked in a uh, very expensive Silicon Valley valley uh, sorry in san francisco and um the the woman she's actually doing marketing and she could actually remote work remotely and um they don't she doesn't really have an office to go into and then so she was saying how like the cost of living was so expensive she was in um san francisco yeah san francisco and then i and then i thought hey wait a minute if you just move to oaxaca mexico which we were in like just a couple months ago um you could rent a place for 400 bucks you could eat out every day you could live easily on twenty thousand dollars for the two of you per year and your work wouldn't even notice because you don't have an office to go to. You're just working remotely. And the time difference is like pretty much the same. And she's like, huh? And she's like, I actually speak Spanish too. So that would work out. And that's what she did. Like she actually moved to Oaxaca and her work didn't even suffer at all. They didn't even notice. And then she cut her expenses to so much that her husband didn't even work, need to work anymore. Cause think- it was, and then they actually like managed to become financially independent really quickly, and now they're traveling the world with That's us. That's awesome. Kind of them in, in Europe, so yeah, it's just you can use this to your advantage. Like we have so many advantages that our parents do not have. And I Matt, love you talk this. About that in your book, right? You said that this is like the best time to become financially independent and be, become financially free is now because look <clears> at all these tools. Like we can, we have all these budget airlines to travel. We have travel hacking. We have the internet. We have the ability to work remotely. Like let's use that to our advantage and then. Have Hack our way to permanent vacation as quickly as possible, yeah. just like this couple did. Yeah, you you talk about like uh, there's never been a better time to become financially independent. I argue there's never been a better time to be to be traveling permanently because the tools that we <laughs> I have. I love now, that. It's just such like just has such a beautiful ring to it. You know, travel yeah, yeah, yeah. forever. Because because the, the thing is, I I'd argue that even five years ago this would be a lot more difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's this movie called A Map for Saturday, and this was a guy uh, a guy in New York. He had a job that he hated. And he is a movie producer, so he, he he traveled around the world for a year, and then he decided to make a documentary about it. It's called A Map for Saturday because, like, when you're traveling, every day kind of feels like Saturday because you don't know what day of the week it is. It's just something yeah. we, yeah. yeah, totally. So uh, in in the documentary, you can see him trying to like trying to like use guidebooks that are like out of date and like everything's like in the wrong language, and he's trying to call home and he's trying to use calling cards like hello he- hello, and he's like being cut off, and like you can really see how difficult it was back then. Now it's just kind of like, 
my phone, I can talk to anybody at any point. Um, Google Maps always tells me where I'm going. Google Translate's always telling me exactly what everything says. Google Finance. Google Finance is like checking my investments. I have instant access to my money. With my credit card, I can spend money like with no transaction fees anywhere in the world and it just goes direct like, you guys are so cool man you guys look like, like a my- band you guys look like a band like uh <laughs> like you should be playing folk music or like indie rock or something yeah you know? sure yeah uh, sure, millennial it's revolution like- it's like you should do the logo with the fist you know yeah yeah, yeah. Revolution. yeah the red the red fisting it's, yeah, yeah. it's like again it's like it's never been easier to do this and, and know. like we're, you know I, I just, air- our, like our phones, like you know, you just land in an airport, you pop in a SIM card, instantly you have data. It's never been easier to do this, and it's just kind of amazing that all this technology is available uh, to help people like us. We have that advantage over our parents, so let's take advantage of it. Yeah, they, right? they could have. Have it. Yeah, they could have done. Yeah, they could have done this. <laughs> so let's get into the weeds just a little yeah. bit. Um, one of the other things that you're known for, as you mentioned in the beginning of the show, is that you didn't buy real estate. You're kind of anti real estate in a lot of ways. And yeah. in financial freedom, I talk yeah. about kind of real estate being the fastest path to financial independence. And I actually firmly believe that. Like yeah. I like house hacking, you know, especially in the US, there are like certain markets where you can crush it really, really fast and retire yeah. with like yeah. two or three properties. But I know you all have your own opinion. Let's talk about is real estate a good or a good investment to help you retire early? We're actually not in disagreement on that. When I say real estate is a bad investment, I because back because uh, people kind of think they have this misconception that if you just buy a house and then you just go into a massive amount of debt because houses always go up and you just sit in the house, somehow that's going to help you retire. And that's not that's not actually true. Real estate as a for your primary residence, if you're just living in it and you, it's not generating any income whatsoever, it doesn't help you retire. And people just kind of hear, um, you know, articles from uh, like guys like you and Bigger Pockets and these people that are that are using real estate as an investment, and then they're misconcept they're they're misreading that and then kind of saying, oh, real estate is the way to go. I'll just possible. buy as much houses that, are, that yeah. like let them sit empty or live in them, and then just hope for the best. That's not how it works, and that's what we are saying is a very dangerous misconception. Uh, people c- seem to think that investing in real estate is really simple because oh, it's 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 real. I can touch it. It's made of right. brick. I can see it. And but the thing is, if you don't do it right, um, it actually can drag your it can actually drag your um, like your investments. Uh, it can drag your finances down because it causes your cost of living rather than renting to increase. But if you're clever about it and you know and you understand how to use an investment and you understand the math like you do, then real estate you can really crush it with real estate. And here's the shocker: we own real estate, yeah. but we don't own a house. That's what does that mean? We own real estate in the form of uh, real estate investment trusts, right? Which is um, basically like you buy. Uh, it's basically like owning a bunch of apartments and you're actually getting the rent back from them, right? Apartments, so, shopping malls, there's yeah. nursing homes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we actually. Like we, we can actually walk up to a shopping mall in Canada and be like, hey, we own part of that. Like yeah. part of that rent, every time we come here, we look at these stores and they're actually paying rent, we're getting part of that money back, right? So we actually own real estate, so we're completely not anti-real estate, but I want real estate to be an investment instead of what my bosses were continuously telling me when I was working, which is like, buy a massive house, like as much as you can afford so that you know, you're know you on the hook for the all the debt and then we can just boss you around and do whatever you want, we want with you, right? Like that is not how I want to own real estate. Real estate. I want to own real estate the way you want. To, you own real estate, which is give that money back to me as an investment. Like I want it to actually pay me an income because that's what helps me become permanently nomadic, right? So um, it's the misconception that people think like, okay, I'll just buy. I, I'm not going to do any research. I don't care whether it's investment or not. Just buy a house that's really expensive, like everyone else, and live in it, and then just like sell it in 30 years, and I'm going to be retired. Well, you know that's fine if you're just buying it and that's your lifestyle and you want to raise kids in it, that's fine. But if you think that, okay, in 30 years, it's going to appreciate, I'm just going to bank on appreciation. Well, my coworker actually almost died like before the age of 65. Like I didn't want that to happen to me and I didn't want that to happen to anyone else who thinks that, okay, I'll just, you know, wait until, wait until 65, get the golden pension, wait till my house appreciates and then I'm going to enjoy life. The most important thing, like you said, Grant, 
time is more important than money. And then I realized health is even more important than time. Because you have true. all the time in the world, but you have no health and you die at your desk. What good is time or money? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah Cause go ahead. No, you go ahead. Because like with real estate, I mean, like there's a saying that you can't take a shingle off of the house in order to pay for groceries. Like it doesn't help you retire. It just traps you in one location. Right. The way you guys, right. the way you guys do it and the way we do it, which is we care about cash flow. We right. care about owning so real estate. So there's a right way to do real estate basically. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that's what you guys do incredibly well. And that's why we mention your book and our book because it's just kind of like these guys, you know, if you want to learn how to do it with real estate, like, you know, we're not like, right. we're not experts at that, but we know the wrong way to do it, which is how all of our friends are doing it. If right. you want to figure out the right way to do it, talk to this guy, Grant. He, yeah. he knows what. He knows what. <laughs> so, um, how do you invest uh, in a way? So, you, you talked about real estate investment trust. What else do you invest in to make this possible? I know, uh, you know, if you could talk a little bit about the yield yield shield and some of these right. concepts that, you know, if, let's say someone's just starting investing and they want to best set themselves up to be able to do what you did. How, what's the best way to set up your investments to do that? Sure, sure. So when you are just starting out and you're still working, uh, you don't need to do any kind of fancy stuff. Just buy the index and be done with it because um, – because that's you don't care about current income as much right. you care about future capital gains because current income uh, like dividends and that kind of stuff you're going to get taxed on when you receive it right. while capital gains get taxed on much much later when you actually need it when you actually shift to retirement it actually becomes a bit of a different game so you care more about uh, yields which is a combination of interest coming from uh, bonds as well as dividends and uh, coming from stocks um, and you uh, so you care about that because you need money every year to live and you want to be able to get that money without having to sell stuff uh, because that's when you run into problems when people talk about what's called sequence of return risks they're worried about uh, a stock market crash happening the year after you retire and then you're forced to sell stuff when the markets are down and as and because you do that uh, when the markets come back up again you don't have as many units uh, to participate in the rally that's the danger that's what happens with uh, sequence of return risk but the thing with index funds is that you, they never go down to zero because that would require all companies to go down to zero um, they always eventually rebound. So in a market downturn, you want to not do whatever it takes to not sell anything. So that's why yield is important. So in the book, we talk about pivoting our portfolio to more higher yielding assets like preferred shares, REITs, which Christy just mentioned, um, higher dividend paying stocks, as well as corporate bonds and these kinds of things. Because these things, uh, these assets may not gain as much in terms of capital gains long term, but they pay a higher yield. So when you were like a, a stock heavy portfolio will yield on like the S&P 500 yields about 1.8, 1 1.9% um, in dividends. But by pivoting towards uh, fixed income stuff and higher yielding stuff, we were able to bump that yield up to about three and a half percent. So on a million dollar portfolio, it, we're living off of four, you know, the, people say the 4% rule. Uh, and that's kind of a guideline that all of us fire uh, people use. Uh, we were living off of $40,000. And um, because we did these things, the portfolio is yielding thirty-five thousand dollars every year, no matter what happens. So you don't, even if it goes down, it's still making thirty-five thousand dollars in cash, and it's just paying you. So you take that, you combine it with, so that's what we call the yield shield. And you know it's legit because it rhymes. Uh, so <laughs> when, it's true if it rhymes. You need the shirts, so you, yield shield. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So once, so we call that because like once you can live inside the yield shield. You don't have to sell anything ever. You you don't care about market upturns. You don't care about market downturns. Genius. Um, you just you just use them on it forever. So we take that, we combine it with, and again, there's a five thousand dollar gap between thirty five thousand and forty thousand dollars. So you keep a little bit of cash in reserve. So we say like maybe five like three to five years uh, worth of cash. So to make up for the five thousand dollar gap, we kept about fifteen thousand dollars. So it's not a lot, just in cash. So be able to be able to. Um, so that we can use that to make up the gap in down years. So if it's a down year, for example, which actually did happen in our very first year of retirement, we took the yield, $35,000, we used one year from the cash cushion, and then that's our 40, and then we didn't have to sell anything, and we just live off of that. So take these two, uh, you take these two um, kind of levers, which is higher yielding access, which, uh, assets, which we call the yield shield, as well as the cash cushion, um, and then you use that to buffer yourself and guard against sequence of return risk. So that's what happens when markets go down, like a 2008 happens. That's how you. Uh, that's how you survive. That's how you pay for your um, living expenses. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. 
So this is kind of like what we like to call like the three prong strategy because we're engineers. So like, you know, previous life engineers. So we like to have backup plans for everything that goes wrong. Right. So then first you have the yield so that you don't have to sell any of your assets. You don't have to worry about the capital value going down Two, you have the cash cushion in case, you know, something fails there or even like if dividends get cut or anything like that, you have your cash. And three, you can travel, which I mentioned before, you can actually move to Thailand live on $20,000 a year, somehow 2008, if it happens again, you're making money because you're still yielding money, but then you're actually living less than the yield that you're actually getting. Yeah. So you're actually making yeah. money during depression, right? So, here's so the, here's one of the things that scared me the most during 2008, because I talk about this in the book, which is, you know, I grew up in poverty in China. So like, I am very, very like risk adverse type of person. So um, we actually lived through 2008 during the time we were investing. And one of the scariest things is just putting in $1,000 one day and the next day it's just gone, right? It's not really gone, it's just has not recovered yet. But my head is just screaming at me going like, do you know how much, like, how much time and blood and sweat and tears my family had to like put in to earn this amount of money? Like just, it was just mind boggling because growing up as a kid, I thought like a can of Coke was the most amazing thing ever. It's like that could buy me like thousands of cans of Coke and it's just gone in one day, right? So the idea that like we have these multiple backup plans is really helpful for someone like me who had like, grew up with a, like a scarcity mindset because you worry, you really do worry during like a downturn, uh, what what happens with my portfolio and I don't wanna have to be like forced to go back to work, I don't wanna have to ever think about money in that scary way ever again. So this like um, strategy that we came up with as engineers is basically what helps us give that like peace of mind if there's ever um, another market downturn, which yeah. there will be because that's basically reality, right? It's actually really, really powerful because if you combine all three of them, <clears throat> you know, the portfolio is yielding $35,000 um, and you're living on $20,000 in Thailand, that means that every day that you're lying on a beach in Thailand, you're actually making money because your portfolio is yielding more than you're spending that day. Yes. So it's like every day we were sitting on a beach and we like, okay, we just, we just made another like 70 bucks today by, by sitting drinking, on sitting on a beach and drinking margaritas. I think I'll get a massage. I think I'll, I'll get, get a seven massage. massages. I think I'll get, yeah. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> it's insane. It's like once you, once you figure out how all of these pieces kind of fit together, which we outlined in the book, um, it becomes this insanely powerful weapon that it just be, it just it just becomes more money than you know what to do with. Like it it, it really well, does. It feels like cheating. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I thought your book. I had high expectations, but it really blew me away. I was like, "There's a, so much in here," you know. And that means a lot. I'm gonna give my favorite Amazon review for my book to date. Said something to the effect of. I learned so much about how to reach financial independent, almost everything that you need to know, almost too much. <laughs> and that's what I would say about yours. There's a lot in here, you know. I crushed yeah, through it, though. There's a lot. You got a lot of good info. I, I think this adds a really useful, like, really, really useful, like, it's really well done. Uh, oh, thanks, thank Greg. That means really unique. Yeah, like I, I was like, I really like was like I I know this is gonna be good, but I was like, damn, <laughs> I really liked it it's actually, a lot. It's actually, it's actually interesting because uh, your book and, my, and our book came out like within a few months of each other, and they really kind of complement each other because they both talk about yes. kind of two two separate and distinct, but they're not like in in. Uh, like with they're not in conflict with like each other. Fit in really well yeah. because because what you talk about a lot is like the kind of side hustle thing. How to grow thing, your income. How to grow your yeah. income and right. the, uh, location independent businesses and this kind of stuff. And then we talk about the spending side of it a lot as well as the investment side. So it's just and kind the of lifestyle. and yeah. the lifestyle. So like here's how you do it from that side. And then you, and then Grant, you talk about yeah. like here's how you do like here's how you really like juice up your income and use house hacking and all these like right. crazy Absolutely. tricks and yeah. kind of stuff. So it really becomes a like. Um, like a choose your own adventure. It's like yeah. no matter what kind. Yeah, the triangle yeah. that we talked about, which is uh, uh, we talk about this thing in the book called uh, I, I like to call it the F I triangle, which um, in finance. How about the phi the, angle? The phi angle. Oh yeah, I love damn! It. I, uh, too late to change it <laughs> now. <laughs> too late to change it now. But there's base in personal finance. There's basically three things that really matter: income, expenses, and uh, your investment, and then how your investment right. performs. Because they're the only three things that matter when it comes to money: income, money coming in, money going out, and then money made on money. So the people 
so the reason why there's so many books out there that, that, that talk about money and sometimes they say very conflicting things, like some books say buy all the real estate that you can and then we say don't buy, any, don't buy real estate, rent instead. And the reason for that is that there's basically three major, like three basic ways of getting to become a millionaire. Uh, and one is make a lot of money. So be really, really good at um, be really, hustling. really good at hustling. So that's where you kind of come in and all the strategies that you use to, to, to uh, take it there. The second is um, be really good at managing your expenses. So tracking your expenses, figuring out where to get the most value for your money. And some and people or live a more luxurious lifestyle for less. Yes. Which is what some people does. a lot of people think uh, cutting coupons and, cl- no. and make, like spending less money is clipping coupons, cutting your own hair and. And When's the last time you clipped a coupon? No, never. <laughs> um, as it turns out, you can move to Thailand, live on a beach, and that's your way. Or Portugal. Or yeah. Portugal, yeah. or whatever. And it's your way of spending less. And yeah. that's what we discovered, and that's what we talk about in the book, too. And then the third way is um, investments. So uh, the house hacking stuff, uh, kind of doing what you do, kind of doing what Paula Pant does, yeah. or being like or... Buffett, like all these guys that talk, that talk about like how to you know buy energy contracts and like all that kind of like weirdo stuff like that. So that's three different ways of getting there. They're not in they're not in conflict, but they have to you have to match it up with your personality. That's but if kind you of what do all doing. three, <laughs> I mean that's that's when you get the 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 acceleration point, right? You move somewhere like Thailand and you're building an online company and you're just making more and more money at your online company and you're just creating yeah. bigger and bigger differentials so you can buy an island eventually. Yeah. I mean, isn't life. that, that's yeah. like... That's kind of, it's, it's kind of funny because we're naturally positioned obviously on the on the route that we that we took, which is uh, which is being really good at uh, managing our, our spending. But now then we read books like yours and we're starting to learn kind of like how you did and we're starting to adapt some of, we're starting to learn some of the lessons and doing the, all this online business stuff that we're just kind of, some, like every time we talk to you, we learn something new about like SEO or marketing and this kind of stuff. And we're like, oh wow, in, in many ways we're good at very, we're very good at the spending stuff, but in many ways we're very new to the kind of stuff that you talk about. So it's really cool that like our books really just kind of fit together really really they nice. do they, like- they look beautiful look at this <laughs> Aww, yay, <book> friends. <laughs> yeah, it's a good yeah, package yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, i mean i yeah. think they did a really hip design like i mean it, they look really current you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's we're actually yeah. At the same. that's what happens when you're in the same publishing house we're like pup siblings yay. yeah yeah yeah. actually yeah. so uh, to to your to your listeners uh, uh you're you're with avery which is an imprint of penguin random house and we're with Tartar parody and then uh, a few months ago, the two companies actually merged. Yeah. So a lot of the same. So a lot of the same people are actually working on the same book. Like us, you, and uh, Aaron, I think, yeah. are all in the same. Like they're all they're all the same. Like they're all yeah. the same people that same are working. They don't know each. Yeah, yeah. They don't know each other, and they're all reading all these books, and they're like, oh my god. So it's really kind of interesting that they have the synergy inside um, inside our publisher that yeah. has kind of created almost by by accident. I wonder how many of our uh, like publicists and editors are like kind of eyeing the door and going like, oh look, I just hacked my, my life. Pu- my public. My publicist quit. Did you know that? <laughs> did you know that? Three weeks no, in. Three not. weeks in. We did the pitch meeting. We came up with our whole plan. We started doing it, and then she just like sent out an email, and she's like, like I'm done. you know, Back sorry, to my life. Grant, Grant, I'm like, you know, next Thursday is gonna be my last day. I appreciate oh, all the inspiration, <laughs> the lessons. I'm going out on my own. Oh. My our editor is now like like during the last like Trump related stock crisis or whatever. My my editor emailed us and, and she like, just okay, kind of like okay. Now. I mean I'm putting money in index funds. Is this now the right time? Are these like, the right what, ones? The right time. So they're actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. It's actually I remember uh, when we were filming the documentary, which were in which all three you know which were in together. Um, that after the documentary uh, filmed, it turns like the camera people like the crew ended up like going home and oh, like yeah. paying off their student debt and starting to like yeah. get their. Yeah, financials yeah, yeah. in order so it's like you can really see how, how the like impact the yeah. impact we're really changing lives together which is really i was not expecting that at all i thought i would be retiring uh like she did no, not like we the- we, f- we found we found like a new a door to a new thing and i think yeah. you're right i think our doors combined make a bigger door <laughs> you know i really do yeah. it's just more yeah. options which is yeah, good um yeah, but I mean, you've noticed this. I mean, like, you you, you just had a, a massive uh, book tour, and like, you're seeing the impact that you actually have on people, and you're changing lives, and you're helping people, and it's a it's an intoxicating feeling, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's very it's very humbling. It's like yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, it is. just to to help people in that way and and connect on that level, like money's life and so when people figure out you t- talk about money and they read the book and then they come see you, it's like they just pour their hearts out. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. and everyone's got a story and everyone's doing the best <clears throat> that they can. And uh, there's a lot of hope out there. And that's what's cool. We give people hope. That's what we do. Yeah. We're in the hope business, you know, yeah. like, and people are doing it and their the lives are changing pretty fast. And that's the, the badass part. I yeah. like that. I like that. I, I like that that hope business thing because we were just talking a few days ago that we're like I don't, we're not actually in the finance business because the, no, the what hope the business. finance industry does we're is in the it, dreams business exactly I said we're in the I, I said we're actually not in the we're, we're not actually in the finance business the the three of us are in the dreams business and I was like all right I like that a lot better you said that <laughs> because well no I, I like your the way that you put it I actually said that we're in the entertainment business oh, but yeah. you're I like yours is a lot better you're we're in the dream business. Because finance is predatory, right? You're trying to get like the next rube and sink mm-hmm. your hooks into them so that you can make 1% of their money for like forever. Right. We're not actually right. in that because we don't actually want anything from our customers. So we're not actually in the finance business. We're in the, we're in the hope business, the dream business. I like that. Yeah. One yeah. thing I really like about financial independence, I'm sure you've noticed this too, is like once you have enough, you kind of change your mindset from like, okay, I'm like just trying, just struggling, like paying my bills and all this stuff to like, I don't really need money anymore. So like, how can I go out and help people? And how can I honestly like tell them the truth about how great this is? Like every time we can, we get sponsorships for really bad, you know, credit card deals or any kind of trying to get people into debt. I'm like, no, 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 a thousand times. No, because I don't care how much money they're offering to pay me. This doesn't help people. I don't need the money. We have enough money. Once you get to enough, you just want to help people and you want to, you want other people to live this life. Cause you're like, I can't, I feel like I, I hacked the system. Like this is a chess game that we won. Like we, we completely turned the rules around and now it's actually in our favor rather than going against us, right? So at that point, you just want to share it with as many people as possible because you want to bring as many people along with you as possible. And it's yeah. an incredible. It's like the way of the bodhisattva, as they say in Buddhism. Yeah. Sure. Like you, <laughs> yeah. No, you're like dedicating yourself to the relieving of others suffering. And that's what we're doing yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. But... And what's- What's interesting, uh, what's interesting, uh, and a bit of a parallel between our, uh, between your story and her story is that uh, both of you kind of start off with like, you know, you tell a story of like, I had like three dollars in your checking account, kind of thing. Two twenty five. Right? Two twenty five. Two twenty six. Two twenty six. And and her as well. I mean, like she she alluded to this earlier, but she uh, again, she didn't grow up in the West. She grew up in like rural China, and at some point, and at one point, her family was like growing up in abject poverty, living on like forty four cents a day. That's the level of poverty that she had. So in in in, just in like 30 years, going from that to millionaire what is a really remarkable journey for for um, for all of us. And and doesn't that just blow your mind? You're like, how did I get from that? Like, how did it's that such a be- it's such a be- it's a very yeah. be- it's a very beautiful story. I like that about the book too. You know, it's not it's the equal mix of technical and storytelling and entertaining. I found like it almost like an adventure story in some ways. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. nice to go through the phases, and I really loved it. I think you crushed it. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. I feel I the really, same way about. Yeah. yeah, I really do. It's nice. It's nice when it comes together uh, in that way. I, you guys should be really proud because it's a really. I can tell you put your all into it. I can tell you put. All, I, I can put, put, tell you put all and more into your book. Because like, we would. Because we were talking while, while we were both writing the books, and and, and we're then like, wow, you were really like really, so. You there's, really put everything to it. There's a saying. There's a saying in the publishing industry that if you want to, uh, if you want to write a bestseller, you have to bleed onto the page. Mm-hmm. And I know you did that, and we 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 did that as well. Because it's when you put like you, you said that you wanted to like collapse on the finish line in like a, a heap of exhaustion or something like that. And it, <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a line I that could, I always I remember. I could see the, the and fruits I was like, of I could, that labor. I could I see that you put yeah. everything into yours, and and as well as kind of her entire life story we kind of put into there and we try to make it as use we made it as useful as possible as well so it really is like every single lesson that we learned about money same with you every single lesson you learned about money and then you were and then to uh, to package that up in a way that's like readable and and whatever it's uh it's 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 an emotionally draining experience isn't it yeah yeah it is it is but it's like addicting like i've already started <laughs> i've already started on the next one oh awesome. god i'm ready to roll <laughs> Are you gonna take a break this time? I mean, like, dude, you're like, you're like, going, oh, go, go, go all the time. I don't know how anyone keeps up with you. Yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm just in a creative period. You know, I'm just trying to get it all out while it's fresh. You know, you gotta want to do it, and so when you feel it, you should just go because you don't know how long you're gonna feel that for. 
That's true. You know, That's, life's yeah. just, we're all growing and changing. And so the seasons, you need to embrace the season, you know. I think yeah, that's I guess. true. I, I, I thought I thought of I thought of you too when I heard this Kerouac quote. Let me see. Um uh let me find this quote on this one of Jack Kerouac you know Jack Kerouac, right? The author? Sounds familiar. He wrote On the Road. He's like, I really, you should read On the Road. On the Road, whoever's listening to this, watching this, needs to read On the Road by Jack Kerouac as soon as possible. Because Jack Kerouac, in my opinion, is the best American writer of the 20th century. Yeah. High praise. And, what? High praise. Yeah, and his girlfriend said... Um, said something about him that made me think of you too because it's like Kerouac was always on the road he was always traveling he was always going somewhere new and they did I'll find it but it was something about living in the the moment but I'll find it. Um, anyway, <laughs> it yeah, was yeah. it was something about to the effect of like you have to keep moving because somehow you soak in the present so intensely. That's definitely true. That's exactly what it feels like. It really it's does. Like, um, I think one of the things that I notice about travel is like it. I think it opens up your mind to like a lot of other things that I never even thought possible. Like one of the things that people ask us is like, okay, what about if you have kids? Can you actually do this forever? And the thing is it was actually travel that actually helped us find the solution to that problem because we were actually in a um, Airbnb in Mexico and there was this woman and she was there with her son, her 10 year old son. And then it was in the middle of the school year. So I asked her, Oh, Oh, you're actually been traveling for the last, you know, three months. How, how did you do that? Were you able to take your kid out of school? Is that, is that okay? And she's like, oh, no, no, we're, we're actually part of a, a community called World Schoolers. And I was like, what? That is a thing? Okay, tell me more. So I like, literally would not let her leave the Airbnb and just bombarded her for two hours with all these questions. And it turns out that uh, you don't have to actually stop traveling. You don't have to stop living this life if you have children. Because um, So there's this actually group of traveling families that they meet each other online and their kids actually hang out. Um, so what they do is they actually use the world as their classroom. And on top of that, some of them do um, send their kids to international schools for a period of time, or they actually like school them like on the road. Like they'll do things like, hey, let's learn about the Vietnam War. Let's, let's go, let's to, go Vietnam to Vietnam. And, and then they'll, they'll go to yeah. like the Hanoi Hilton and they'll go to these like historical the places where the actual fighting took place. And then they'll teach them like with they'll teach history, like come to life. Right. Kind yeah. of thing. Right. So like we then reached out to some of the leaders of this movement um, uh, called the World Schoolers. And they're not. That's why they're in the book that we that there's this. Thing where we go and actually interview the people in that and we only learned about that because we just happened to stumble across them when we were traveling i, I mean you notice this so when you're just li- living in one place and you're kind of surrounded by people who are all thinking the same way and they're just like oh house 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 or like whatever uh, but when you start traveling you meet people who are living way with different lives yeah. lives in like really you know non-standard non-traditional ways and then you start realizing oh there's many many ways of con- of living your life out there there's many different styles of it, and then you can kind of, as you as you, you learn more about it, you can pick and choose. Like, you can pick and choose like what works for you, yeah. and what you know, and and then we kind of realize, oh, okay, well, if you combine this with world schooling, with the the digital nomad nomadism, and then online businesses, all of a sudden you you create this like New, this jigsaw yeah. puzzle of life that's just just awesome, right? And and I had no idea that some of these pieces even existed until I went out there and I started traveling. Wow, we've covered so much. Um, yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, you can tell when the two of us get together, we we, we do this kind of like yeah, you know talk about like <laughs> of, about high energy talking about like talking 10, 10 million life. different yeah. like uh, topics. But yeah, that's kind of like um, so. Yeah, if you if people want to learn more, it's all in the, it's all in one of our two books. So get one, then get the other. <laughs> yeah, tell us about the book. Where can people find it? Anything else that we should know, um, everyone should go get it. It's incredible. Quit Like a Millionaire by Christy and Bryce. Yeah, it's uh, 
So it's on, it's on, you know, it's, it's anywhere where books are sold, Amazon, yeah. Barnes and Noble. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you want to learn more, just go to our website, uh, www.quitlikeamillionaireallinword.com. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. it's been so wonderful to have you on. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Um, I truly do believe that our books are completely complimentary. And it's so wonderful just to be sharing this experience uh, with both of you because, like, we're each having, like, really – like like of all the people around i think have the most similar experiences happening right now it's been which a crazy is year, hasn't it grant yeah it's been crazy but it's been a crazy year for both of us it's going to be it's just going to get crazier we're just getting started uh, yeah. everyone hope hope we all team up and you know hit some international spots for part of an yeah, international yeah, yeah, yeah. tour Absolutely. definitely so Absolutely. stay tuned for yeah. that but thanks for being on the show thanks for all you do for the community for everyone i'm so happy to be on this journey with you this is christy thanks. and bryce thanks. quit like a millionaire financial freedom podcast hope you all have a good day thank you guys thank thanks you for having us.